Lady Rainicorn of the Crystal Dimension uses the MacGuffin of a Crystal Sandwich weapon, called the Mergence of Destruction, to elaborate on the world of the Crystal Dimension and to flesh out the past of Lady Rainicorn herself. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the first time Lady Rainicorn has had subtitles to accompany her Korean dialogue, and it's easy to see why. This episode is mostly centered on Lady herself, and the gimmick of us having to wonder or presume what she's saying would simply not work in many of the scenes. The same applies to Lady's ex-boyfriend. Named Lee. It's actually a rather bold move for the Adventure Time crew to include so much Korean dialogue. More than half of the episode's dialogue was accompanied by subtitles. Now, as somebody who has watched anime and foreign films in their original languages since I was a wee babby, subtitles are absolutely a non-issue for me. Sadly, a lot of people in general are still put off by subtitles, so it takes some guts to incorporate them to this extent. While TV is the character that sets the story of this episode into motion, we don't find out anything particularly new about TV himself, nor does TV develop as a character. He decides to try living in the Crystal Dimension by the end, but he's still pretty much exactly the same as when we started. If TV gets an episode dedicated to him in the future though, it's cool to now have a brand new dimension to explore, so at least there's that. We do, however, learn plenty about a brand new Rainicorn, named Lee, and Lady's past relationship with him. Lee's behavior is anti-establishment for the sole purpose of being anti-establishment. Before his demise, he asks Lady to join his cause one last time, but we as an audience, and probably Lee himself even, are not sure what exactly his cause was or is. Now, it's not as if being rebellious against the Crystal Dimension establishment is without a basis. The Crystal Dimension is a post-war society, after all, where the two factions have now integrated and live side by side. Recall Jake's brief history lesson in Season 2. Horrifying wars. For thousands of years, Rainicorns battled dogs over territory in the Crystal Dimension. That timescale might seem a bit odd, knowing when the Mushroom War first occurred and all, but remember, Jake is a dog. Therefore, dog years. The timescale totally makes sense in dog years. Still, this war was extremely prolonged, and it's surprising the two sides even managed to find peace in a manner where they live side by side. Our glimpse into this post-war society is relatively brief, but the power dynamic does seem to be rather balanced between the dogs and the rainicorns. However, an argument for cultural displacement could be made. While none of the dogs in this episode utter a single word, we know Joshua and Margaret speak English, as does Toronto, and he makes a cameo during the flashback. And we know that Korean is the native language of Rainicorns. Both species can understand each other, for logistic reasons, I guess, but Lady's parents opting to use translators and Roy straight up speaking English seems to indicate that, at least linguistically, the dogs are winning out. And the linguistics might just reflect culture on the whole. Dog culture has permeated into being the norm more thoroughly than it has Rainicorn culture. However, all this theorizing taken into account, it still does not seem like Lee's rage is fueled by the outcomes of history. No, it seems like he only uses historical contingency as a fallback excuse for his feedback loop of hate. He rebels against and scoffs at dog-driven concepts without even bothering to understand them. As is often the case with bigotry, Lee is partly driven by ignorance. When Lady was still love-struck and foolish, she derived enjoyment from Lee's pranks and crude behavior towards dogs. But Lady was a passive observer, and it wasn't really the harassment of the dogs that her enjoyment came from. Rather, watching the happiness and thrill her boyfriend got out of it is what in turn gave her happiness. But as Lee's rebellion became more extreme and his hatred became less of a game and more of an ingrained complex, Lady began to show concern. And Lady left her boyfriend, named Lee, as well as the entire Crystal Dimension and relocated to the Land of Wu because she was hiding the Mergence of Destruction from Lee, since he could potentially incite another Rainicorn Dog War with it in his possession. Now it was a little odd how despite the magic sandwich going missing, this didn't result in political upheaval. Seen as how there are dog revolutionaries as well, I guess there would be no way to place blame on a specific faction for the theft of this magical sandwich, and without the item ever turning up, there could have simply been a decision that somebody from outside the Crystal Dimension stole this item, and therefore this avoids the brewing of any conflict or tension between the dogs and rainicorns. My overall verdict on this episode is that I thought it was decent.
I don't like to use the word average, but for me, it really felt like an average experience as far as what Adventure Time can deliver. Maybe that's just a testament to how wacky and zany Adventure Time is. Since it can make an episode about a magic sandwich that can potentially incite an interspecies war in an alternate dimension due to the callous actions of a character's ex-boyfriend, seem average. But the strengths of this episode are counteracted by some of the issues I had with it, and the net result just didn't resonate with me all that much. While the episode packed a lot of content, I would have really loved further elaboration on the socio-cultural situation within the Crystal Dimension. I think this could have been accomplished without cramming in additional content, just revising some scenes and background elements here and there. Lee was funny and charismatic, but all things considered, he was a pretty dry character. He felt a bit too much like Ash 2.0 in some ways. The bad boy or bad girl ex who takes it too far is a fairly common trope, and there was no clever subversion or building off of that general concept. We now know Lady made a huge sacrifice at a pivotal moment in her life, and that's the reason she lives in Ooh. But prior to that decision, she came off like a really vacuous character in the flashbacks. And to top it off, this episode also cornered itself into having a predictable and anticlimactic resolution. The episode felt by the numbers in many ways, but the wacky charm and fun still provided for a solid and enjoyable viewing experience. I was not disappointed by this episode, but I wasn't impressed either.